Well, we're sitting here the 1st of July and we finally have June numbers in and we're definitely not only feeling a shift in the market, but we've got some data to talk about. Yeah, the market has changed very significantly over the past couple of months. That change is now being reflected in the data and we're gonna take a very real look at these numbers and what they mean for both buyers and sellers. I'm Eric Martin. And I'm Emily Austin. Together we are the Austin and Martin Broker Team. So if we look at what has changed over the last 30 days, I can find my sheet. <laughs> um, so these are the numbers from June of 2022 in King County. King County is the greater Seattle metropolitan area, including Seattle and Bellevue. Um, compared to last June, our number of new listings, number of listings that came on the market was just under 3,900. That's a 7% increase from 2021. Yeah. And the number of sales is actually lower than that. The number of houses that sold is significantly down, down 25% from June of last year. Now, June of last year was a very brisk market, as most Junes are, but we definitely saw a cooling this June. And I should point out that sales in June meant these were houses that went under contract in May, generally speaking. It's Maybe usually late April. two to four weeks to close a deal. So median price is still up. 925 that's up about 7% from June of 2021 but as we'll see here in a second it's down a bit from May of 2022 um, and the actual days on market actually got shorter so things were still selling briskly correct uh, in May and June so in June our number of days on average days on market was still only nine days uh, which bodes very well for folks looking to sell their home still so what has happened a um, couple of things have gone on. The first thing is, I'll look at this chart. If we look at the beginning of 2022, you'll see a big spike in median prices. So house prices in the King County area just went through the roof here in the first half of the year. And quite frankly, it didn't seem sustainable. No, it, it was a frenzy out there. And that frenzy was being caused to a large extent by the perception that mortgage rates were going to go up. So buyers were trying desperately to get a house before the mortgage rates went up. And we were seeing $800,000 oh. houses selling for one, 1 1.1, 1 1.2 million. Yeah. The wild, Just, the wild escalators. The wild escalators were Trust wild. Trust not sustainable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so sure enough, though, those interest rates did go up. And maybe even a little more than the economist actually expected. A lot more than the economists yeah. expected. Uh, we were doing so, a video late last year where people were saying, we don't think interest rates are going to get above 4% in 2022. Well, guess what? They hit... Six. Six percent. They've come back down a bit since then. And but, so you have these high prices yeah. and then a pretty big jump in interest rates. And, and quite honestly, that just knocked some of the buyers right out of the game. So if we look at this same chart, we see we spiked uh, median prices in King County, landed at about a million dollars at the first part of the year. And then in June, we took a big, not a big, but we took a step back from that. You'll notice, though, throughout this chart, which goes back five years that there are a number of times in there where the monthly prices or even for a couple of months in a row months a couple months in a row the prices have gone down and traditionally in the summertime i think there's there's a, there's a, bit of a, a little slowdown. bit of a pullback people are on vacation they're out of school and currently with some of the the world um instability you yeah. know it just has buyers Maybe pulling back a little bit. They put it in park or put it in neutral for a little while. Yeah. And the um, the thing to remember is we generally look at year over year numbers in real estate, not month over month. And there's a good reason for that. And that is the people that bought a house last month are not going to be doing what this month. They're not going to be selling and they really shouldn't yeah. sell for a couple of years. Exactly. So. so generally speaking, unlike stocks or bonds, when you buy a house, you're planning on holding on to it for quite a while. You're buying it usually to live in it. So the people that this may impact are flippers 
and folks that bought a house specifically hoping it was going to continue to run up like it was and then turn around and sell it. But that's a very small sure. portion or of the market. Sure, or sometimes people have to, they get a last minute job change and they have to move and so maybe they won't recuperate um, their costs right away. If we look at this next chart, this shows the same data but spread out to take some of those peaks and valleys off. This is how the data is usually presented. It's a 12 month rolling average each data point as opposed to a one month uh, data point. I won't get into the details of that, but the trend is still clear. The it's a prices, much clearer line. Yeah, the, the, the trend is still up and has been for a very right. long time since the, the Great Recession really was the last time the trend line actually went So down. we are still in a seller's market. We're definitely still in a seller's market. Nine days uh, on the, nine days of, of, of a home average yep. selling time is definitely still, still a seller's, a seller's market. market. Now these are some really um, very clear numbers because they, they'll they show you how much they actually impact a buyer's ability with yeah, the new let's, rates. Let's take a look at how those interest rates impacted buyers. So this uh, calculator you can get to from our website, austinmartinre.com. Um, you just pull down the menu and go to mortgage calculator. You can play with these numbers all you want. But what I've done here is I've taken an $800,000 purchase price, taken everything out of the equation. So the, the actual payment would be higher, but for the purposes of the illustration, I pulled out your insurance and your taxes, And this would be uh, at, at the rate of 3%. So 800000 at 3%, which is where we were at the end of last year, the payment, principal and interest on that would be just under 2700 It's 2698 Got it. Then interest rates went up to 6%. So if we throw that same roughly payment, just under 2700 at 6%, <laughs> now we're at a $560,000 house as opposed to 800000 Yeah, I mean, that that's a significant difference to a buyer in terms of where they want to live and what they want to live in. Absolutely. It could make a difference in whether they're buying a single family home or a condo. Yeah. So as you can imagine. It so, was, so not surprising yeah. that a lot of buyers pulled back and said, we're going to sit and wait. It's also not surprising um, that we'll, we'll, how do I say this? We're, I think we're starting to see some of those folks come back to the yeah. table now, but with a different mindset in terms around what are we going to buy because the benefits of home ownership are still there the long-term increases are still going to be there so there's a, a little bit of a there was a pullback Acceptance. and now we're seeing some yeah. of them come back in the market i also will say interest rates are no longer six percent as of today july 6th they're uh, at about five and a half so they have come back down and since uh, that height. a buyer could recast their loan absolutely uh, as we heard somebody say recently that you're you're marrying your house but you're only dating your mortgage correct and so to me it was kind of silly to have somebody pay a million two for an eight hundred thousand dollar house because you can't go back and renegotiate that but you can frequently go back and renegotiate your mortgage by by refinancing we think there's opportunity in the market right now specifically for people that were hesitant to sell their house because they knew they would then have to turn around and buy a house in what was a really frenzied oh, crazy seller's market that favored sellers and buyers were having a very rough time out there. In fact, we have gotten clients into contract pending inspection recently. They haven't yeah. had to waive all their contingencies as of late. So for the seller who was hesitant, they can still capitalize on the equity gains they've had. Which and, have been significant over the past three or four years. And make a, a change in what they're living in and maybe not have to compete. Okay. Yeah. So the bottom line is there's been a little steam release on that tight housing market. We think it's for the better. Yeah. And um, we're excited for buyers and sellers The market right feels a lot more sane on both sides a of the table. A lot more manageable. I'm Eric Martin. And I'm Emily Austin. Together we are the Austin and Martin Broker Team. Let us guide you home.